Well, hello and welcome to this edition of a Tesla Timeout series. Today I'm featuring some products for my friends at EV Annex or Evanex, depending on how you want to pronounce it. Down the guys down in Florida had sent me, they sent me a couple of items and I'm going to put them on. Uh, so I want to thank them. I'll put all the links to the stuff that I have here um, in the show notes. So you'll be able to see them and link on them and all that stuff. And if there's any discount codes, I don't have one myself, I believe. So they always have something on their website, at least a 10% that you can find. So I would I'd encourage you to look at that. But uh, anyway, I got a few things that they got for me. So uh, let me get right into it. Okay, so one of the things they sent me was this safety hammer. Now, um, if you've never had anything like this, basically these are heavyweight items where they have a point on them. And if you needed to escape from the vehicle in a uh, situation, in a dangerous situation, you would use this to smash the, the window windshield of the glass. Uh, and then there's also a razor cut at the bottom of this that will cut a seat belt as well. So it's Something I saw on their website and I said, yeah, if you want to send me it, because it's always good to have. I know there's concern sometimes that the power is out on these things and you get stuck inside them or whatever, you get into an accident, you can't open the door, then these can come in handy. So I'm going to probably just put this, it comes with a screw mount, like a holder and a mount for this, but I don't really want to put any screws into the dash underneath. I'm just going to probably take it out of that holder or, and put it into the center console so it's easy to get to in the case that we need to, to get it in, uh, to get out of the vehicle. That's basically what these for. But you can look at them. They're, 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 this is pretty generic as far as safety hammers go. So nothing magical. Just a cool item to have and something to think about as part of your safety kit for your Model 3. Okay, so another item that I received from Evanex today, something I've been looking at for quite a while and I decided to do this. Now, I'm pretty sure I'm probably going to get a lot of comments about why are you doing this? Teslas are unique in a lot of ways and one of them is the door handles, you know, the way the door handles open, these J handles. And I get it, I'm fine with them. Um, but you wouldn't believe how many people that I drive in this vehicle that I take out or that use my vehicle that still have a problem opening these doors and especially if I'm getting people that have never been in the car. And it happens to be quite a lot. So it's not just once and then they remember. Uh, but it just happens quite a lot. So what I wanted to do was get these door handles. Now you may have seen them on AliExpress or some other sites where there, there's quite a lot of them. Uh, but the idea is that they just basically 3M tape over the J handles that are on the Model 3. Um, so there's tape here on that. You can see it's got the shape of the handle. And the idea is that there is this opening and that you put your hand and you pull or you come from under and you pull. Same thing. Um, so more like a quote unquote normal vehicle. So I'm going to put these on um, because they're 3M tape. Once you, you can always take them off. You can heat them up and slowly peel them off over time, uh, or, or peel them off if I wanted to take them off. So there's it's not a it's not a hard install as far as being able to undo it if I decided to change my mind later on. But I watched some videos and I watched some people install these and the usability and it was actually very easy to open the door. This seems to get more leverage on that pulley system to open the doors, whether it's coming from underneath or coming from over top. It's not a big deal, but again, you'd be surprised how many people really can't figure out how to open these doors. They're fumbling around, it's, they're opening it, not grabbing it correctly and fumbling around and I just don't want, I want to make it easy. Now, you're probably going to say, oh, well, what about aerodynamics, right? Because the, these are flush door handles and now you're going to have something sticking out. Oh, about an inch, I guess, basically, it sticks out, as you can see. Uh, very aerodynamically shaped. Well, I don't think it's that big of a deal. I've read, I've watched some videos and I've read some things people think it's one, two or four percent. I think that's utter nonsense. There's no way that door handles are going to be four percent of your aerodynamics. But hey, I'm not an aerody aerodynamics engineer. I just drive the vehicle. I'm not worried if this is gonna be 0.1 of a percent, you know, hit on aerodynamics. It doesn't phase me at all. Model 3 has enough range to get me going where I want all the time, even in the winter. So I'm not concerned about it. If you're really concerned about it, then don't get these. But I'm getting these for the convenience factor because I do like the, the, the J handle, don't get me wrong. And I was actually thinking about even putting a kit in um, to uh, automatically pop the handles out and light, the, the handles are lit as well. Similar to the Ionic 5, the EV6, the Genesis GV60, a lot of these where you, you walk up, you see the handles come out. Um, and I was thinking of installing that kit. It's really expensive and the kit's expensive. And this is just a much cheaper 
and less costly way and something that I can easily reverse if I decide to. And I was concerned about the, the pop out ones where maybe there's a software update and it screws it up. I've read some things. I know they get better with time, but less is more in a lot of cases, folks. So that's kind of what I wanted to do with these door handles. So they are a plastic, basically just a molded plastic with 3M tape. So I'm gonna install these and I'll show you some of the quick stuff that I do when I install these and show you what they look like at the end. All right, so first thing they say you to do is to clean off the vehicle, the handles with some, uh, of course, uh, cleaner. So uh, isopropyl rubbing alcohol is a good thing. So I'm going to clean the handles just to make sure there's no dirt, grime and grease on them. Um, and then uh, we'll continue. Now, just test fit them before you uh, actually peel anything off and set it. As you can see, they only go one way. So there's a, one side for the driver's side and one pair for the passenger side. This is the driver's side, so there's two of them for both the side handles. And you can see this is the passenger side, so it just doesn't line up no matter what you do here. It doesn't line up properly, but if you put it upside down, so it's quite easily to, to see what side is what. It's pretty blatant, because they're exactly cut like the handles. So you can't really muck that up. Just take the, the side that you're doing, the two handles out, and get it ready. Now, one thing they give you to help uh, make these things stick so they don't come off is this adhesion promoter wipes. They give you two of them, one for each side. So once it's clean and prepped, then take out the adhesion promoter and wipe the handle with it entirely, and then you're ready to stick on the handles. So once the promoter is on, then basically what you'll do is you'll just line it up. Make sure I have the right ones here. I'm gonna grab the other ones. You'll line it up, peel off one section of tape, just line it up. Uh, actually, what they say is they say to take the whole tape off, start with one end, and then just pop it in like that, basically. Follow it down so that it's a nice match, and then hold it and press it. So that's what I'm gonna do. Okay, so I have one example on here. So what I did is I pushed it on, try to line it up uh, as best as I can, so it's an even kind of thing. You can still see a bit of the chrome around it. I had on some carbon fiber kind of stickers that were on these before. And I decided to peel them off because I wasn't sure if this was going to stick onto an existing sticker that's been there for like a year. I thought over time it might peel off, the sticker might loosen up. So I went back to just taking it to the bare chrome that comes with my vehicle, which isn't the blacked out version that, that the refresh has. So as you can see, uh, it fits pretty close. Again, you're gonna get a little bit of chrome gaps, but I'm not so worried about the look. It's more as the functionality that I'm looking for. and. And you can see that it goes, opens really easy. Like it's, I hardly have to touch it to pull. It's quite an interesting pivot mechanism that it's taking advantage of. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put some painter's tape and I'm just gonna tape it down here. I warmed this up a little bit with a heat gun as well to try to get the adhesion going a little bit better. So make it a little bit hotter. And then I'm gonna put some painter's tape and leave it overnight so that it sets in a nice dry, warm environment and my garage is, is a good, you know, 15 to 20 degrees C. I've got the heater going tonight to warm it up. So, so that these things will stick. So I'm gonna rinse now and repeat as we say, and do the other four hand, the other three handles the same way. All right, so here I have them installed, basically stuck on. So I put some painter's tape to apply some pressure. I held it in place with my palm of my hand for about a minute, just a nice, easy pressure, not too powerful. Um, after I heated the backs up with, a, with the heat gun just momentarily, just to get a little more stickiness. That should help with the bonding process. That with the uh, provider material that they, that they give you um, should help these things bond. I mean, if they fall off, they fall off. I'll have to see. And then I'll have to report back how they last. But uh, Evan XAZs are a good set. They should stick and last forever, basically. But time will tell, especially with our Canadian winters and stuff, we'll have to see. Now, one of the pros of these handles were that a lot of people were talking about was the fact that it's easier to open the, the vehicle if uh, you get the snow and ice, right? Because those J handles can freeze and it's hard to open them up. But of course, Tesla has the new software, a new feature uh, coming out in the software where you can press and open the driver's door. It'll just pop it open enough that you can get your finger and pull it open. So kind of defeats the purpose of needing something else or, you, or a tool to to chip off ice or anything in the winter time. But again, my reasoning is the fact that I get so many people that can open the doors. 
I don't mind the aesthetics. I like the looks of them. Look pretty good, so I'll show them to you uh, tomorrow, I guess at some point. I'll come out and video once I take the tape off and show you how they work. Okay, here's the same thing for the other side. So I've gone around and done the passenger side, same way, heated, cleaned, or cleaned, you know, dried off, cleaned, and then heated a little bit, stuck them on, put the painter's tape to the hole. Let that go overnight, and then I'll see what they look in the morning. All right, so it's the next day. I've taken the paint off. It's cool today, or the painter's tape, I should say, off. But uh, here they are. Here are the handles. Um, I like them. I've actually opened the doors already, and it's quite easy to open the doors. So, yeah, I see a bit of the chrome, but I'm fine with that. Go around to the back here. And you can see a side profile of you. Again, not much from aerodynamics, but hey, what do I know, folks? You know, you make up your own minds, but there they are. Now, how do they work? Well, should hopefully uh, the phone's close enough. Yeah, that's it. Really, really easy. Don't have to put much force on it at all. I can even use my pinky fig finger to open it up. It's that easy. You can come from underneath, even back here, pull it, still works. So again, most people are going to come from the top and pull it, and it's just going to open up. It really takes advantage of that pivot mechanism because it's pulling the weight uh, onto that pivot here versus what we used to have to do is push and pull. So it's just pulling in, and, and this is pushing in really nicely. So I like them, and I think it's going to make a lot of difference for people coming in and out. The question mark here will be to see how they hold up over time, especially over the winter. But I've done what I can to get the best adhesion out of this by heating them up, by giving it a good cleaning, using the adhesion promoter, leaving it on overnight in a nice warm environment with tape, some pressure on it all night. They should be good to go according to the instructions because it's pretty easy, but time will tell. Anyway, so that's good. I'm happy with that. I think they look great. And we're, let's get on to the next item that Evanix had sent me a steering wheel let's check that out all right so like i said i've got the second item here for uh EV Annex or evanix it's a steering wheel and i will put the title of it right now up on the screen here so i get because i always forget the name of it uh ricaro ricaro i don't know it's the carbon fiber leather one there's two there's a ultra suede Al alcantara one and the carbon fiber leather i wanted the carbon fiber leather so that's the one that i got and this is basically how it comes packed, you can see here. And then this is the wheel, it comes packed very nicely. And this is the wheel. It's a beautiful, lovely wheel. Now it's all integrated carbon fiber with nice leather, uh, tight stitching, a carbon fiber on the bottom. It's a little more flatter than the OEM Tesla wheel. There's lots of different variants of these wheels that are out there with shapes and different, you know, hands, uh, prints and stuff like that. But this is one of the two that uh, EV Annex have, and I, I wanted this versus the Alcantara leather. Now, this is one that you have to actually take the core out of the old wheel. So not only the airbag, obviously, but you have to take the controls, the rotary uh, button controls, the dials, and the instruments that are in there. It sounds hard, it's not that hard, but I'm going to, uh, I'm getting it installed, so I'm gonna bring in my installer here, introduce him, and he's gonna walk us through, and I'll take, uh, little video snippets of the installation process so that you know what to do. Sure. <laughs> All right, so I'm here to get my wheel installed, as I just said, and I'm here with the man, the myth, the legend, Cyril Wheeler, Wheeler Automotive. How are you, sir? Good, I'm good, Ken. Thanks for doing uh, All right. Thanks and for popping partner, in. Joe. Joe. Partner in crime, Joe. Our, here, we've got right? a new partner in crime, Joe, here at Cyril uh, uh, Wheeler Automotive. All the details on how to reach him will be in the show notes, but Cyril, is a Tesla genius. He knows everything there is to know about Teslas and for people that live in the Southern Ontario and, and in fact other parts of Canada because you travel and do a lot of work. We do a lot of traveling now. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're doing like a little mobile pop-up visits, right? So now that I have Joe on hand, it makes life a lot easier for me. That's it. Um, Ottawa, uh, BC, the uh, and uh, the island as yeah, well. So yeah, and you know we're trying to you know help the uh, community yeah. all across Canada, right? So and we do a little bit of uh, remote work yeah. in other countries as well. Excellent. So all these details will be at the end of the show in the show notes. But Cyril's going to walk us through the installation process, and the first thing we'll quickly talk about is we'll kind of go through the steps, and then I'll video each step. So it won't be a long run out, but you'll see what's important. And I think the first thing that we wanted to highlight in the steps is the safety element, right? Because there are there are guys that have done you know the wheel install, especially on the yoke or others, and they don't turn the power off. It's you know they just start it and do it. 
What's your take on safety? What's kind of the first steps we should look at? Well, for those you know DIY guys, we want to do safety first, right? So first, we're going to make sure we power down the car, 12 volt, and we're going to disconnect the uh, loop um, on the penthouse. So. And it's usually in that order. Disconnect the 12 volt, which will be the negative on the 12 volt. Correct. Right? Negative and 12 volt. We'll, we'll show you rip off, uh, not rip off, but just easily pull up the rear seat. Yeah. I'll and rip it off. Disconnect it. He'll rip it out and put it back together. <laughs> so we'll go through. But that's an important step, and I think everyone needs to understand. Important first right? step. Yeah. Because, yeah, like, I mean, we do it. We know what we're doing. We're very careful of what we do when we're doing the airbag. Yep. Right? But, you know, you don't want anything to. The chances, are, wrong, the, right? chan and so, the chances are low that it would deploy, low, it but work. there's always that small risk and you don't want it for safety, but also the expense, right? How much is it to get another airbag? Uh, I don't know. I don't want to be about an airbag. Like a thousand bucks or something? I mean, it's not <laughs> cheap, right? Yeah. Yeah. Airbags are cheap, so right? They're not cheap. So you don't want to go on off anyway, just in case. It shouldn't, but you never know. Exactly. So we're going to do that. We're going to pull the powers in that order. And then uh, he's going to use the, the mechanisms to poke... Uh, 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 put the, the types of uh, screwdrivers or Allen keys up into the two holes to pop out the airbag, right? Because right. that's pretty straight. It's just a clip that holds the airbag in. Then we disconnect the connectors for the airbag, disconnect the connector for the controls, for the core controls and the wheel. Then you'll use a 10 millimeter hex to undo the wheel with a nice big breaker bar because you got to get some leverage right. to do that. Leverage to do that, yeah. Two, two people are really good. Yeah. Uh, I see people struggling with uh, one yeah, person trying to do it, it you know, holding with your knee, and, and then yeah. you got a torque on it. There's obviously yeah. the, the bolts are, you know, got a little bit of Loctite on it. Yep. Um, That's right. And uh, a longer 10 hex, which you yep. have here, right, which we'll show you there, is mm -hmm. better than the short, stubbier one. But then you can use a short, stubby one and extension. But this one looks great. Right. So. Just think of your leverage, right? Is that what it is? Yeah, exactly. Right. And then you don't have anything extra attached right. onto it right. that's going to cause that to strip out, right? So yeah. two guys is really good. So you're going to do it I yourself. Do the right grab thing. a buddy. Huh. Our, I got my buddy here. There's always the Joe around. Right? There's, a, yeah. There's always the average Joe <laughs> somewhere exactly. in your neighborhood. Right. Joe, no like, respect, eh? Yeah. <laughs> exactly. He gets, he gets no, no respect. No then way. just wiggle the wheel off. We're going to show you how to replace the core. It's pretty straightforward. It sounds like it sounds a lot, but it's not. And then reverse it all the way back, right? Right back to putting the 12 volt as the last thing, right? All right. All right. All right. So, so let's get to it. Let's, let's get to it. it. All right. All right. So that uh, I, Cyril just took off the panel, which just pops out, and then it's just one quick screw, and there we go. The 12 volt negative has been disconnected. Now we'll go pop the, what do you call it? The penthouse? Oh, hey. Yeah, the connection for the penthouse. Yep, let's go do that. It's under here. And never do your doors once you've disconnected your... You gotta leave them open, right? You gotta leave everything yes, open, that's right. yeah. So usually what we'll do is we'll we'll drop a rag in between the striker because you know we have a lot of customers yep. coming around doing things exactly like you did, right? Yeah, I gotta close the door. And we're like, no, no, don't yes. do that. Good point. Right? So what we do is we like to, you know, again, right? We want to air to safety side. So if you loop, a little rag through here. Oh, that's a great idea, yep. Right? You drop a rag through here, yep. and then, you know, just knot up, and then whoever's going to come by is going to try to close the door. Yeah. You can't latch it. Perfect. Possible. Because so, you are cutting the power, so you won't be able to open the doors. Right. Once exactly. you, yeah, once you just get mm -hmm. your 12 volt in your loop, you're, uh, you're out kind of on your own, so. You got it, okay. That's what we do there. Yep. And then we're going to safety catch here in the middle yep. of the seat. Just move it towards the inside. We just lift this up, grab the foam. It makes a nice tuck, mm -hmm. tuck thing under here. And then here's your gray connector. Can you see in there? Yep. Okay, and then I we're just gonna yep. flip this down and you'll hear it pop. Okay, so that's you know. Oh, my car. No, that's, <laughs> that's it. That's you know the car is disconnected. And you yep. can just leave it off. Leave it hanging so leave it hanging in, there. in the seat there, yep. Leave it up top, everywhere. Sweet. I'm not gonna make any connections. That you leave. Yeah. This obviously you leave, don't close it. Yep. And it doesn't it doesn't screw up the computer or anything like that. It just depowers the car, right? That's it. Okay. Next step. So basically, there's two holes there, folks, at the uh, behind in the steering wheel, and you just put a pick or a screwdriver or Allen keys, and you'll feel there's a spring that you have to push in, and then you'll you'll see the airbag pop up. There's two um, uh, locks for the airbag into that spring mechanism, two posts. So you're it, it it's a trial and error. You just have to play around and feel with it. It may look harder than it is. It's just a little bit more of a time-consuming um, effort just to push that the wire in where those um, airbag mounts are so that they unclip. And you'll know when it's unclipped because it'll pop out. 
So Cyril got it out, as you can see, he popped it out. So there's two cables that you pull out. There's one for the airbag and they're just, uh, they're clips at the top and the bottom, which you have to squeeze towards the center, uh, either by hand or by pliers. I don't know what you're gonna use, but. Well, I'm just gonna use side cutters and cut the wires now. <laughs> Yeah, so the two plugs, you just squeeze those tabs in yeah. and uh, then pull, and this, the other one will take out afterwards. Yeah. All right, so then once those two clips are out, um, then you put that uh, 10 mil hex in. And uh, again, having a breaker bar, having another person to hold the wheel so that you can get some leverage. It's all about leverage on this so that you can undo it because it's got Loctite, as you said. And just take your time. If you're going to do this yourself, you know, probably have to use a knee, a couple of a couple of knees to do it. It's it's doable. And there it goes. That's the pop. So once that nut is off, uh, as you can see, Cyril's just wiggling the wheel. Uh, it'll just slowly rock it back and forth, up and down, and then it pops out because it's in a groove mechanism and it's easy to put back on because it's notched. So you can only really put it on one way. One way right? So it works you don't pretty want good. To mess with the clock spring, right? This yeah. Spring for the airbag. You just just leave all that stuff while it it, while yeah. it's there. All right. Yeah, we're flat all right. So once you have the wheel off, there's you'll see it, that there's clips in here uh, behind here. These black clips, and what you have to do is just kind of squeeze them together so they pop in, and that'll get you access to the screws on the other side to sure. take out the whole core mechanism. See, I have been learning something, Cyril, here you, and there. You're way ahead of the game. I don't know why I'm doing <laughs> this. You should be doing it yourself. <laughs> I know, you just like to drive all the way to here. I just like to drive all the way here to see you. That's it. Grab a coffee on the way and I'm, and I'm good. You're golden, yeah. That's it. Grab a coffee. Did you bring coffee and donuts? I didn't. I'm sorry. That's Ooh. my fault. As soon as you're done, you're going to go. Yeah. <laughs> I'll show that. All right, so they're released, as you can see. What that does is it gives you access to the four screws you need to undo. Right? And where are they again, Cyril? So there's so one. Point them out. One, two. two yep. Yeah. Three. And you and might have four. to move parts aside so you can get to them, but it's pretty easy. And these are the T25, right? T25. Torx T25. So you just take them out. All right, so once those screws are out, you just have to pop the core housing out. And it's just simply, you know, lifting up on the different plastic pieces as Cyril is doing there. You can kind of see, just be gentle with it. Take your time. This is all a time thing. There's no super rush. And, Never super and rush. the, yeah, the core will pop right. out because again, and here we're going to reuse that and also take out that spring or that clip there. So it looks like a complicated mess, Cyril, but it's pretty straightforward, right? Because it just kind of goes back in the same order. Correct. Well, it doesn't come with the spring. No, it doesn't come with the spring. So as you can see, he's taking out that spring or the clip, and that's what really is the part that holds the airbag in. So you just put it back in the same way. It's pretty straightforward. Fits underneath the grooves there, and that's it. That's that. So now we're going to put it back. Uh, again, you just reverse the order as you took it off. Just reverse it. You'll snap everything in and then put the four screws in and then push the black clips in to lock in. So in that order, do that. All right, so Cyril has put those four screws in and now we're just snapping the um, plastic pieces back in and it's just a matter of pushing them in. So basically that's it. You may hear a clip, you may not. You can always know if they're in, so just like that, you hear the clip. And you'll know they're in if you flip it around, you'll and see we that they've, they've come through, right, on there. Look at that. Yeah, looks good. Almost. Looks like you know what you're doing, Cyril. Kinda, yeah. Okay, so we put the wheel in. We're just gonna tighten up the uh, the wheel nut there for the steering wheel. We were just double checking the torque rating and it's 80 Newton meters or 59 foot pounds of torque that uh, is recommended for torquing the wheel in. Uh, most YouTube guys that are out there don't tell you that. They just say hand tighten it and then go a little bit more, but we wanna get it right and follow the instructions. Follow the instructions right yep. here. So Tesla, Cyril has three, it in writing. Service manual, text manual. So if anyone questions us, shame on them. Right here from the service manual. Right there from the, so there you go. From the, whole from the horse's mouth. <laughs> so we heard the clicks. It's clicked in and down at the nice torque. So again, he's going to just reverse the install. Going to plug in the, uh, I think that's a purple harness, right? For the uh, core controls. What are these called again? I always forget what these called again. Scroll wheels. Scroll wheels. Scroll wheels. Ah, scroll. I should know that. And you're putting in a little Loctite, I see, right? Just no, a, I didn't put a Loctite. I'm just, just torquing a... the bolt. So everything that Joe and I do here, we torque everything to spec. So once we torque it to spec, we mark it. Right? Oh, okay. okay. Just in case. I don't have a paint stick because I ran out, so I use liquid paper. So there Bic, you go. If you want to sponsor me, Bic. They still I... make liquid paper? Hey. I remember those days. <laughs> <coughs> oh, excuse me. 
All right, so then we just reverse it, putting in the control plug there, and then uh, again, we'll bring in the airbag and plug that in and then push it straight in and we'll be good to go. Certainly much faster putting it on. And we will check it once it's on, when the power's on, see and make sure everything works because the horn should blow. Make sure. All right, so for repowering, again, just follow the reverse the process. So here we're gonna do the loop first at the back seat. So it just basically lift up the back seat a bit and then you just push it in and then uh, there's a locking mechanism, a handle it, you pull down to lock it in. Replace the foam bits for it. And then once that's done, Cyril will tighten up the negative on the battery. And there, we heard everything click and we're back in. Yeah, the car is coming back to life. It's that easy, folks. Replace the, uh, the cover there. That always gives me problems. I don't know, that thing never goes back on. And then we'll done. Part. All right, let's check this to make sure it works, Cyril. It works, all right, oh, woohoo. There we go. Car come back to life. Car is coming back wheel. to life. Looks good, yeah. I love it. So just quickly show the wheel as I'm driving here. Um, you know, it, it's a very nice, comfortable wheel. I can't put two hands on it at this point, but uh, I like that it has these grips here for the thumbs. I really like the flat spot because it's really nice with this this ridge here to look, put the hand on. It just fits perfect, when, especially with highway driving where you're kind of just set at a cruise um, and with autopilot engaged and I can rest my hand and still control, have control of the vehicle. So I really like the, the feel of this. The carbon fiber feels really nice. Um, it's a nicely weighted wheel and uh, great job. Again, everything works. All the buttons work, the horn works, all that stuff. So. Uh, really nice wheel. I certainly suggest looking at um, at these uh, Evanex stuff and um, putting it together. So yeah, thank you uh, EV Annex again. All right, so I, and I just checked the controls on the wheel to make sure the volume and all that stuff work. They do, so that's the other thing to do. So, Cyril, we're done, my man. What do you have to say? Thank you, Ken. Well, thanks for stopping in, and hopefully that was a good tutorial for the people out there to yep. learn how to do their own yoke or, you know, fancy smashy steering Because there's tons of aftermarket steering wheels, yeah, uh, different exactly. combinations of carbon fiber, Alcantara, so check out... Just pick and choose what you want. Exactly. And so and do it. Yeah. So again, I want to thank my friends at uh, EV Annex or Evanex, depending on how you want to pronounce it. They sent me this wheel, shipped it up to me uh, along with these door handles. So I want to thank them very much for that. It's a beautiful wheel. So if you're interested in changing it out, check them out. They've been fantastic. They've been supporting the Tesla community since the Model 3 came out. So back from 2016, I think they're really good. Have you seen these guys in Florida? You met them? Seen no? Them. Next time you're there, go check out EV An Evanex or EV Annex. Yeah. And again, all the part numbers and everything will be in the show notes. If there's a discount code, I'll look it up and I'll put it in there. If I don't have one, then just you can get one from their website. But hey, thanks for joining Cyril and myself and Joe. Appreciate Joe for your thank help you and for getting thanks this wheel us. in. And thanks EV Annex and Evanex for sending me this stuff. And thank you for tuning in to this edition of my Tesla Timeout series. Everybody stay safe. And until the next one, I'll see you when I see you. Take, Take care. Bye-bye.